<laughs> Good morning and welcome to the swimming pool church. Uh, this morning I've got a message for you, for you. Actually, this message started yesterday when the Holy Spirit showed me something in the scripture. But uh, it was a difficult day for me yesterday. I faced a few things, not things that I'm personally always going through, but things that some of our congregation members are going through. Um, we are praying with, with Brian and them, uh, you know, uh, whose, whose children are ill. Uh, we've got various things that we that we face and fight and, and yesterday uh, it, it felt like it was just a bit too much because i heard of so many people that that were going through difficulty people that are facing difficult things and uh, for me it was just that yesterday was just difficult i mean i heard some stories about a friend of mine whose um, family member got shot um, another story where his daughter got murdered and all these things that we've that we face in life and it just hit me that you know i spoke to another lady yesterday who, who was also going through difficult things and it just hit me that everybody's going through difficult seasons this morning i woke up with a, a whatsapp on my phone from somebody who's who, who can't pay their rent this month and, and who's facing a difficult season and as a pastor and uh, somebody who's been a christian for 30 years next year uh, it's, it's our 30th year in ministry we want to offer hope we want to offer encouragement we want to tell people that it's going to be okay but some days we we see the insurmountable things that are going wrong around us and it's it's quite intimidating to see these things but yesterday as i was reading um a this scripture it actually something just triggered inside of me and there was this message that was born as they went as they went now i'll, I'll read a section out of luke 17 uh, verse 11 now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and, uh, and uh, Galilee. Uh, as he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at distance and they called in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Now these ten men who had leprosy, they had no hope. I mean, there was no cure for leprosy. Uh, leprosy was a sure death sentence, but not just a death sentence, a sentence of exile a sentence of being put out of the city living out in the field like a like a wild animal and so these men had no hope they they had, they had no prospect and they crying out to jesus have pity on me obviously when when you heard you had leprosy when somebody hears they have cancer when somebody hears they have this disease or they have that disease or their family is sick or they have a crisis there's this situation of impossibility where nobody can help you now nothing can help you there's nothing you can do and they cried out to jesus from a distance and maybe today many of you feel that you're a distance from jesus there's another leper that was healed and um, just after the sermon on the mount i think it's in in uh, in matthew 7 or 8 uh, there's another leper who healed but this leper actually came close to jesus and jesus touched this leper uh, which which was amazing uh, amazing demonstration of compassion but these lepers they were far away they were standing way out and they were crying to jesus and and they were crying in a loud voice and they were saying jesus master have pity on us and maybe what what hit me was maybe you feel that you are at a distance because a lot of times when there's a difficult season when there's something that happens in your life that's uh, difficult that it doesn't look like this is something that god was supposed to allow maybe in your life or something that you're uncomfortable with or something that you 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 you're sort of devastated by it you you feel that you you're a distance away from the lord and even at that distance that is perceived distance it's it's a distance that you are perceiving because god is closer than a brother the spirit resides within us but even the fact that we feel this way and we feel that we are a distance away from god doesn't it doesn't derogate the fact that the lord loves us it doesn't destroy the fact that god loves us and he cares for us and that he will even help us in our weakness because when he saw them he said to them go and show yourself to the priest now you know he didn't say to them be healed he didn't say to them everything's going to be okay he told them to take an action of faith and a lot of times when we look at scripture we we will see that we have a promise and we have to start living that promise before we see the manifestation 
This is uh, probably what the Apostle Paul meant when he said in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, For we walk by, by faith and not by sight, living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promise. He says, we're living our lives in a manner consistent with God's with belief in God's promise. So he says, we're looking at the promise, we're looking at the circumstances, and now we're living in faith. We, we're seeing those things that, that are not in the physical yet as though they were. And we're living our lives consistent with God's promise by faith and not by sight. And sometimes when, when we have a promise, when, when we have this instruction where the Lord says, this is your inheritance, this is what you have, this is what, what you can have, this is, this is what I've prepared for you, this is what is yours, then you have to take action. And what he said to them, there is, he said to these ten lepers, he said to them, guys, you go show yourself to the priest. Uh, now they knew they had leprosy obviously we don't know how long they had leprosy we don't know what their situation was but they knew that that, that if they looked at their body they, they, they looked at probably all fingers limbs that were falling off rotten flesh the, the excruciating pain they were looking at themselves they were looking at jesus and they were thinking okay so what does he say now he says go show yourself to the priest so what should we do now and what did they do i mean these men actually started walking towards the priest so they started walking and i believe they started walking while their their body was still not healed and sometimes we have to start acting upon the promise before we see the manifestation if we want to enter into the promise if we want to step into it because the enemy has come to steal kill and destroy and he will try and stop you so as they went as they went that's the message title this morning because this is the last part of of, of verse 14 it says as they went they were cleansed so what i when i saw this I, I thought to myself they said jesus must have pity on us he said go show yourself to the priest and then this is the three things that happened as they went they were cleansed so today maybe even in your life when you take action when you start taking action upon god's promise upon god's word you will see that manifestation and what would have happened if these lepers said, but Lord, we can't go to the priest because we have leprosy and, you know, the priest will just send us back into exile. Lord, um, don't you want to come and rather touch us, Lord? Don't you think we should, we should rather do this, Lord? Don't you think we should rather do that? No. He said to them, go. And they went. And as they went, they were healed. As they went, they were touched. As they went, they were set free. As they went, they received the promise. And today, maybe in our lives, in the seasons that we're facing, we should stop facing and, and looking at the season consistently, looking at the leprosy, looking at the issues in our lives, and start listening to the promise that he said. Uh, when we look at James 2, it, 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 it says... Uh, in, in James 2 verse 14, what does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith, but he doesn't have works, he doesn't have action, can faith save him? And then in, in verse 20 to 26, he talks about Abram, and he said, was not Abram our father justified by the works when he offered Isaac? So he says, Abram's justification came, Abram's breakthrough came, when he was willing to sacrifice the son of the promise. So Abram had to believe God against hope, against the physical hope. He, he couldn't produce another heir. He couldn't produce another son. He had no hope, but he had to believe God against the circumstances. And he was willing to, to even offer that son because God said he was supposed to do it. And, and I mean, God didn't want him to offer the son, but God was testing Abram to see how far he would go because the covenant that God had with Abram and that God joined into with Abram, that covenant is still working because we are now seed. We are in Christ. We are part of the promise that we are justified by faith, that we can receive by faith because of Father Abram. So Abram had to take the step of faith. When God said to him, go to Mount Moira and offer your son Isaac, which you've waited for for a hundred years, Abram could have said to God, but God, I don't understand now what you're saying because I've waited a hundred years for the son. It is a miracle son. Now you're saying I must take a two or three day journey to a mountain and all those days those that three days that i believe it was three days if i remember correctly that three days that abram was traveling with the son he was talking to isaac all the time and he knew what the instruction was
but Abram believed God against what he saw, against what, what the physical. So Abram could say, I walk by faith no, and not by sight. And that's why I, I wanted to encourage you with these words. It's the same, uh, that scripture in, in James 2 verse 20 to 26 also mentions Rahab. And, and I'm thinking about Rahab, the, the, the prostitute or the harlot. She was justified by what she did because what she did was when the spies came in, she protected the spies of Israel against the physical knowledge. They had one of the most fortified cities in Canaan. Uh, they, they were safe. They had, they had good defense systems. And here we have a few Hebrew spies. But somehow Rahab has heard about the Hebrew people. She heard about Abram, Isaac, Jacob. She heard about God leading these people out of Israel. And she started understanding that this land was promised to, to the Hebrew people. To Abram, Isaac, and Jacob, and and she somehow believed that, so she protected the spies, and she she diverted the army in a different way when they were following the spies, and because of that, Rahab and her entire family was saved. She she acted in faith, she acted in belief again as they went. So maybe today you are standing like those lepers, and and I'm not minimizing what you're facing or what we're all facing on this planet. You're facing difficulty, but maybe you are standing. On a distance like those lepers and you're shouting jesus master have pity on me and maybe that's how you feel and, and i've prayed those prayers myself and i've cried those cries myself crying out to the lord but now is the time for us to rise up in faith now is the time for us to get into the as they went section to start taking action upon god's word you see the problem that we have under this covenant and, and again talking about abram this is a covenant of faith. So if you can believe it, you can receive it. But it's a covenant of possessing the land. It's a covenant of putting your hand to something. So we are in a situation as the church of Jesus Christ today. doesn't matter what you're facing. doesn't matter what you're going through. But you are in a situation that you are the plan A, the plan B, and the plan C. You might be waiting for God to do something in your life. And, and God will mercifully help you he will stand there Jesus will say go to the priest go to the priest he will say do this do this but the fact of the matter is we as the church of Jesus Christ have to take up the authority and take action we have to be there as they went guys we have to go and act upon those promises so I want to encourage you today to possess what the Lord has for you to take hold of of Christ for what he took hold of you to, to, uh, to, to understand that the promises are yea and amen. They are yours. But the fact is you have to step into those promises. Now, I'm not saying it will always be perfect. But I'm saying that if you, if you step into faith, into the dimension of faith, if you can say like the Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, that you are walking by faith and not by sight, you will start looking at your situation, at your life, at every area of your life, your health, your, your wealth, your finances, your, 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 your physical health, your, your, your relationships. You will start looking at those areas with the eyes of faith and then you look at what you see in the physical and then you look at what you see in the word and then you have to make a decision. Are you going to walk by sight, what you see, or are you going to walk by faith? And I want to suggest this morning to you that you learn how to exercise that faith muscle. That you start exercising that faith muscle by, by, by building yourself up in your most holy faith, by taking in the word of God and asking the Holy Spirit to quicken that word in your heart as a revelation so that you can start acting against what you are seeing. Like these lepers, they had to walk looking at their sores, looking at their body, feeling the pain of leprosy. They had to start walking towards the priest. And as they were walking, as they were taking action, as they were stepping out, as Abram was walking towards Mount Moira to sacrifice Isaac, as Rahab Ray risked a life of her and her family to take those spies into her house, action was taken and then heaven backed up that action because heaven can back up the man of faith when he starts acting upon the promise because the powers and the principalities of the air have to adhere to the to, to the word of God because his word will not return void so that word's been spoken and as we act upon God's word as we act upon Jesus's word yeah Jesus said to them you go show yourself they had a rhema they had a live word from the Lord they had to act upon it and as they went 
they were totally healed. And I just want to say to you today, there are areas in your business, there are areas in your finances, there are areas in your marriage, there are areas in your spiritual life, there are areas where the enemy is trying to occupy territory that he hasn't got legal right to occupy. And by the promise of God, by the promises of God, you can identify what your parameter of authority is supposed to be. And you can go and say, as I went, you can start stepping into those areas and start pushing the darkness back. Start pushing the forces of evil back in your life. Stop confessing the negative things. Stop crying about the things. Stop talking about those things and start talking to those things. Because he says, if you speak to this mountain, it will happen. And that's my word for you this morning. And I know it's difficult. And I'm sure it was difficult for these lepers. I mean, they probably weren't men of faith. They were out there in the field. They might have been out there for years. We don't know. They might have been in a terrible condition. They cried out to the Lord for as a last resort. But when he spoke that word, some or other way, they had the faith to start walking towards the priest start walking towards the promise to start walking towards their destiny to start walking towards the fulfillment of the promise maybe that's what you and i need to do uh, many times the lord said to me especially when things go wrong in a bad way the lord said to me do not flinch stare that devil right down don't flinch don't let your eyes go your flinching is like this do not flinch do not flex you stand your ground you stand your ground, you put on that armor and you stand at your ground and you possess. And then the devil will try and fight in those areas for a period and try and show me the opposite, what I'm praying for. And then all of a sudden breakthrough will come. I've seen this for 30 years. I've seen every time the enemy loses, every time the enemy loses. There, there's been things in my life where it's been five minutes and the enemy lost. And then there's been things in my life when it's been eight years, I'm telling you eight years. One thing I've tr I trusted the Lord for was eight years I had to stand upon God's word. For eight years I was saying as they went, I said, Lord, I have your word, standing upon your word, and I'm walking towards the promise. I'm walking towards what you instructed me. I'm walking towards what you told me was my inheritance. I'm stepping into it, even if I'm seeing the opposite. Even if the opposite is happening, I am stepping into your promise. Don't you want to step into your promise today? In Jesus name I'll be praying for you that you will win this battle in Jesus name because the battles already been won and the wars already been won in Jesus name God bless you